G'day, Kalen here from Red Arc Electronics. In this video, I'm going to take you through the configuration of your Red Vision system. The Red Vision Total Vehicle Management System allows you to take control of all your 12 volt accessories whilst monitoring water levels, temperatures, and your auxiliary battery system when paired with the Manager 30. Now it's important to carry out the configuration in the following order. I highly recommend watching this entire instructional guide prior to making any changes as it is important to understand exactly what this system is doing and what functions may have already been set by the installer. Now, in this video we're going to start with a blank configuration. First, you'll need to download the Red Vision Configurator app from the App Store or Google Play Store. Once you have the app, ensure that your phone's Bluetooth is enabled. Next, you will need to enable the Bluetooth on your display. To turn on your display's Bluetooth, hit the left navigation soft key, navigate up or down to the display settings page, and press the soft key to the left of the Bluetooth icon. You can now pair your device with the display in your device's Bluetooth menu. The pairing code is shown on the Red Vision display. Once you open the configurator, the Bluetooth connection page will automatically search for your Red Vision display. When your display appears, select this on your device. Here, you can either edit the configuration file name from the default or continue to the first step, configure BMS charger. If you do not have a Red Arc battery management system, the configure BMS charger option will not be displayed. Instead, you will continue straight to configure distribution box. Ensure that you've read and understood the BMS manual prior to making any changes. When configuring the BMS, you need to set your turn on trigger. This allows you to set your DC input to be triggered via ignition, automatically, or at a specific voltage. The default setting is automatic. If you are using the BMS load disconnect terminal, this menu sets the function for that terminal. Refer to page 18 of your BMS instruction manual for more detail on these features. Press save on the bottom of the screen. The next step is configure battery sensor. Programming your battery type, size and setting your maximum charge current. You will also have to set the state of charge alarm and low voltage alarm. For more information on these settings, refer to pages 27 to 31 of the BMS manual. Press save once you're happy with your settings. Now we enter the configured distribution box menu. The first step is configuring the load disconnect feature. This will allow Red Vision to automatically turn off all outputs based on voltage or state of charge. Simply select the trigger you would like to use for this feature. Alternatively, remove any automatic control by selecting disconnect or connect. Press save on the bottom of the screen. Now it's time to configure the channels, or simply put, tell Red Vision what you have connected to it and how you want Red Vision to control that channel. The first three channels on the list are digital input channels. These do not appear on your screen as switches, and if you're not planning to install digital input controls, then you do not need to worry about these. You may choose to use these inputs for ignition and reverse signals, which will allow certain outputs to be turned on or off automatically. Next, each of the 10 outputs or channels used needs to be configured, labeled, and an icon selected to represent that output. Some icons allow you to add a single character to the image for easier identification, like A for awning lights. There are three main ways to configure your channels. These are referred to as logic configurations. The master switch option allows you to turn all channels on or off via a single button on the display and on your phone. The first logic configuration is always on. This might be used for something like your fridge, so that you can't accidentally turn it off. The next logic configuration is controlled by a digital input only. 
You can configure a channel so that it only turns on or off with your digital input and can't be manually overridden. For example, a door switch turning on a light. Remember that the digital inputs, which are the first three channels listed, need to be set up prior to the logic configuration. Lastly, you can set up via user-controlled logic configuration. This allows you to have your devices turned on or off manually, either by the soft keys on your screen, via Bluetooth on your phone, or with a master switch if checked. If you have selected user-controlled logic, you can also choose to add digital input override. This could be used for automatically disabling an output when the digital input is detected. For example, turning off interior lights or exterior lights when the vehicle's ignition is turned on. To do this, select which input you want to have control over the channel and select whether you want it to be overridden when the digital input is on or off. Next, select the override function. Do you want the output to be turned on or off? Finally, select if you would like the output to return to its previous state or remain off when the digital input is no longer detected, like turning the car off and having your lights come back on. Remember to click save when you've made changes to any channel. Next is the inverter. Label this and change the image to whatever you prefer. If you have a RedArc RS series inverter, 1000 watts or larger, and have the communication cable connected to the distribution box, check the enable communications. In most circumstances, the inverter will be user controlled and may have something like an ignition override to make sure that it isn't left on when driving. Click save when done. Next are your voltage inputs. Voltage input 1 refers to the start battery voltage supplied to the digital I.O. connector. Voltage input 2 is the auxiliary battery voltage as measured at the Red Vision distribution box. The two temperature inputs are measured using the supplied temperature probes. To set up your water tanks, simply label and then select a character if preferred. Select your tank type, and if you would like an alarm to be displayed when the tank level is over or under a certain percentage. Once you have configured all your channels, we need to go back and enter the Configure TVMS Display menu. Select Configure Soft Keys. The Red Vision display can show six channels per page, controlled by the six soft keys either side of the screen. The six empty slots on your device correspond to the same locations on the Red Vision display once programmed. To add a new channel, simply tap on the empty slot, then tap Choose. Choose the channel that you want to be in that position. To add more than six channels, you can add a new page by tapping the plus at the bottom of your screen. Hit Save when you have placed all your channels. Now, enter the Configure Home Screen menu. Choose your layout from the combinations available. The temperatures will be shown at the top of the display if sensors have been connected. You will need to select the inverter channel if you have chosen to display the inverter on the home screen. The home screen can display up to four of the six water tank channels available if chosen. If you are using a first release of the TVMS, you will only have two tanks available. The two voltage channels can also be displayed. Hit save when you've finished altering your home screen display. Now we'll configure your status screen. This is where you choose to display further information. Select add at the bottom of the screen and choose your screen type, either distribution box, inverter or tanks. You can name the screen and select the information you want to be displayed. The tank status screen allows you to display two rows of tank levels, up to four on each row. If you only select two on a row, they will appear larger than if three or four are selected. The last configuration is to simply select if you would like your units displayed in Celsius or Fahrenheit and hit save. Finally, Press the back button to reach the main configuration menu, then select Program Device.
Generally speaking, it can take up to 90 seconds to complete the first time the unit is configured. And that's it. For any more information, please refer to the product user manual or our website.